in verse 10 of uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I was listening to a song. What kind of brought this on? We plead, we plead the blood. We plead, we plead the blood. You ever hear that song? Who are you pleading the blood to? Folks, be real careful about the words that are in the music. That's the reason country music is so depressing. It's not necessarily the style of music, but the message that's portrayed. See, I've already upset some people. Well, you know, a true preacher of the gospel is highly loved and highly hated at the same time. And all of you are in one or the other today with me. <laughs> when we say we plead the blood, we are not in a courtroom setting. That's right. The judge asks, how do you plead? No one says innocent. Hello. Right. The plea is guilty or not guilty. That's the plea. Right. But the question remains, who are you pleading the blood to? I want you to think about it. Because Jesus didn't sacrifice himself to the devil. Right. Right. All right. Have we got over the first hump yet? We haven't. Verse 10. Oh, I had the message today, everybody. Verse 10. Finally, brethren, he's talking to the church. How many is born again today? Amen. If you're not and you need, don't be waiting about this spiritual rebirth because that's the only way you're going to get into heaven. There's no other way. It's available today. So he's talking to the church, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Turn to your neighbor and say, be strong in the Lord. Be Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, we've, we've got a teaching going around. When you get up in the morning, put on the armor. Now, wait a minute. God never told you to take it off. All this nonsense this preacher has to deal with. And it's somewhat annoying. The question is, when did we get the armor? How many wants to know? Amen. We got a few. Most of you are naked before God. And Satan knows you don't have the armor on. I like to say armor all. I'm going to get out the armor on and spray you, I guess. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh, this is serious. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, the enemy is not people. I don't care how mean they are, they're not the enemy. But we wrestle against principalities, and we're talking about fallen angels, demons, etc., etc., powers, rulers of darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm thinking of some in Congress now. I call them Democrats. Have I upset anybody yet? Anybody hate me yet? All right. <laughs> then he says, take the whole armor of God, not just part of it. Well, we believe in salvation. We don't believe in anything else. Well, you're in the wrong church. It's either all the way or just forget it. Right. Take the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand in the evil day. Are we living in a bad situation? Yeah. Evil? Right. Have it done all to stand. Verse 14, stand. That's all I want to look at. I don't want to get into explaining the armor and this and that. You can study that on your own. So when we talk about putting on the armor, Paul was 
given a metaphor. And when we go to 2 Corinthians 2.11 today for the second verse of Scripture this morning. 2 Corinthians 2.11. Now, whether you like the message or not, faith comes by hearing the word, so just be patient with me. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, many people are ignorant because they don't know the Word of God or they're not teachable. However it is, the Lord doesn't want us to be ignorant about the way Satan operates in this present evil world that we live in. The devil's purpose then, uh, I lost my notes over the years, so I just remembered a few words that I used to to use a start with the same letter, D. We're not ignorant of his devices. Satan, the way Satan operates in this world to try to steal, kill, and destroy, uh, to pervert your faith, to destroy the church, so forth and so on. He hadn't succeeded yet, but he is a worthy opponent. We need to understand the disposition of Satan and how he uses distractions. Has anyone ever been distracted in your walk with God? That's from the devil. Discouragement. Anyone ever been discouraged besides me? It's from the devil. He will cause you to feel dishonored. We need to give honor where honor is due. Satan comes to dishonor people. It's a spiritual conflict that we're in. The devil will use deception. You see, when a person is deceived, they don't know they're deceived. That's what deception is. It's from the devil. Uh, He will use depression. And I know... A lot of us struggle with anxiety from time to time. But going down from there is depression, which is a spirit of depression. So we're wrestling against spirits, not necessarily chemical imbalances all the time. Even though that could be the case in some instances. Uh, Divisions. Now I know no one here has ever had any divisions in their life. In their family, job, church, no divisions, right? Ever. A lady came to me one time years ago, and I could tell she was down and out. Of course. She goes, Brother Randy, uh, she said something. I said, well, what's, what's the problem? She says, well, it's the job. And it's the family, and it's the church. <laughs> that pretty well sums it up. You know, <laughs> I, 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 what do you say to that? <laughs> you need to get the armor on, lady. That's what I say. Where's your armor? There's a crack in your armor. We can solve a lot of problems that we face. Job, family, and church, if we'd just putty up the armor a little bit, get a little spiritual uh, gorilla glue. Never take the armor off, because Satan's a crafty individual. He will use disunity. Well, now, we can't sacrifice truth for unity. We refuse to sacrifice God's truth and compromise for a superficial unity that is not unity at all. It's a lie from the devil. He will defame a person. Mm -hmm. And in case you haven't noticed, if Satan can take down the pastor of a local New Testament church, the flock pretty well stray. And that's the reason 
If you think you're called to preach, get out of it. It will destroy you. Unless you have the mantle. Satan is known as a slanderer. See, we've got to know who our enemy is and how to combat him. Well, Jesus whipped him at Calvary. I know that, but he's still around. And he's still up to his usual evil ways. It will continue until God locks him up in the underworld in the future. Until that time, we've got to deal with it. He's a slanderer. He's known as the adversary. And the thing about that devil and his fallen angels and demons, they work in the background. They work in the background. I call it, they use suggestive therapy on your mind to get you to think contrary to the word of God and then he moves in because you don't have the helmet of salvation, etc., etc., on We'll not go into that. So the question number one, when do we put on the armor? When? Is it in the morning when you get up and put it on? No. So we're not going to even go there. It's too silly to even talk about. When did we receive the armor? That's the question. I'm talking about those that have repented of their sins Give your life to Christ Jesus. Declared Him Savior and Lord of your life. And had your name written in the book, being born of the Spirit of God, and He washed your sins away by His precious blood that He shed on the cross. That's the people I'm talking to today. Amen. Anybody here like that? Amen. Romans 13, 14. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So the very second that we, by faith, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, the armor came. Amen. Now don't think just because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost you got the armor then. It could have been Activated to a greater degree at that point, but the fact is you can activate something you didn't already have. That's right. Right. So you receive the armor when you receive the born again experience from God. The question is, is how to operate because we're in war. We're in warfare. Paul's describing a soldier prepared for warfare. You can't stay on the sidelines. You'll backslide. You've got to get up there and get your licks in against the devil. We need to make Satan pay for what he's doing in this world. And one way is to bring people to Christ and rob him of another soul he wants to take to hell. And that's the job of the church. Not only to introduce people to the Savior, but to mentor them in the faith and make sure they make heaven their home. That's the deal. Very serious thing. So we're talking about then putting on Christ, which is the anointing, and we're talking about a relationship. Say relationship. relationship. We're talking about a relationship with Jesus. Amen. He's alive, you know. But if you never talk to him, how, how are you going to build a relationship? No, oh, there's another thing when it comes to husband and wife. If you don't communicate, how can you have a relationship? If you don't talk, now I know you men, you bottle up and don't say anything, and the woman does all the talking, right? <laughs> Folks, I've been around the block. But we've got to have a relationship to know each other. So many people raise their children. I don't know. It's a rabbit trail here. They raise their children. After children are gone, we have what we call empty nest. Anybody knows what empty nest is? Nobody. You're still raising your kids, huh? After 50 years, is that it? 
Empty nest is when all your children fly the coop. Hopefully, and they're gone. And then you suddenly realize, I don't know the one that I've been living with. Hello, somebody. So what are you saying? I'm saying the only people that have the armor on are those that have declared Jesus Savior and Lord. If it's only Savior, you're not sure you have the armor on. And Satan knows that. So why not just make Jesus Savior and Lord of your life starting right now and forget about the nonsense you've been taught? Amen. 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 How do we do that? We surrender to His Lordship. Then, by faith, we put on His righteousness. That isn't self-righteousness now. It's His holiness, His righteousness, His attributes, His character, His demeanor. His spirit. Amen. Then you're clothed with the armor of God. I'm asked the question, how many today have made Jesus Savior of your life? Say amen. amen. How many has made him Lord? Amen. How many has received Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life personally? But some have strayed. You can come back and renew this thing. That's what the altar's for. You come back and renew this thing and get started 100% again, and God's for you every single time. But you've got to accept the fact, well, I've lost the spirit. I've lost the sword. I've lost the shoes. I've lost, you know, the helmet. I've lost the breastplate. I don't know. See, you've got to get back and recommit your life to the Lord Jesus a hundred percent. Your will doesn't mean anything. It's His will. You must surrender to His will and He wants what's best for all of us. You can't have it your way and God's way. It's His way or you're out. Am I making anybody mad yet? You can't find another way. So we all have to come to the place where we surrender all to His Lordship. I can't do that for you. and You've got to do it for yourself. It is a faith commitment to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, amen. You must never go back. Now, from my viewpoint, it is believed the armor is received at salvation. If, say if, yes. if Jesus is also Lord at the moment of salvation. Right. Amen. A lot of people just want to receive the Savior to escape hell. That, that's a good reason. Yeah. But then you'll never have the abundant life experienced in this evil world that we live in yes. until He is Lord of all. He must be Lord of all or he cannot be Lord at all. He's Lord of everything. Everything you own or ever will own is his. It all belongs to him. We're good stewards. Even our soul belongs to him. Amen. But how many want to be used to God today in a great and mighty way? then he must be Lord. You must know that you have the armor. When you walk out that door and Satan tries to steal, kill, and destroy from you and your family, your job, and your church, you got to know you got the armor on when you walk out that door. Amen. You have to get the Word of God in your heart and your mind and you speak the realm of Word of God, which is the sword that cuts the devil and drives him back. Amen. There's no other way. Jesus defeated Satan in the wilderness by according to the word of God. He didn't have music, didn't have a choir. Nobody was there egging him on. He just said, Satan, it is written. Yes. That's the final authority. And Satan had to back up. Yes. It's the same for us. Jesus showed us how to do it. But this armor is believed that we receive it to salvation. 
And if there's a doubt in your mind about this subject, you need to recommit your life to Christ. You need to give your life to Christ while you can. It's not about joining the church, shaking the preacher's hand, putting money in the offering. It's not about being a good old boy. It's about God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God as is written. There's none righteous, no, not one. But on the other hand, if you're a Christian, you're not labeled as a sinner going to hell. You're called a saint or a Christian, heaven bound. Amen. But until the rapture comes, and I'll be on that tonight, until that time comes and the trumpet sounds, we got to fight the devil. You are going to have to fight the devil. Meaning fallen angels and demons, primarily demons, we're going to have to fight. Remember one time years ago, I was calling to a house, and they were fighting like cats and dogs. Now, I know nobody here has ever had a squabble, right? They were fighting like cats and dogs, and they said, would you come over and see if the Lord shows you anything? So sometimes I'll see things and hear things and know things that I wouldn't normally see, hear, and know. That upsets people. But on the other hand, if they want help, they're glad. That's the way it works. I walk in the house and they, they explain all the stuff that's going on in their house. And I can't discern anything that's wrong. But I look over in the corner of the house and there was an owl sitting there. An owl, O-W, how do you spell it? O-W-L, owl. Help me out. An owl. No, there's nothing wrong with an owl, or is there? And the Lord said to me, tell him to get that owl and throw it out the back door down in the holler in the woods. And it's crazy, or is it? I said, well, the Lord's telling me to tell you to get that. You're the head of the house, not me. And you get that owl and you throw it out the house. So what do you do? He got up and got the owl and threw it out of the door. Shut the door. And I said, then, Lord, know what we're going to do. He said, I want you to go through the house, get the anointing oil, and take authority. Say, take authority. Over every evil spirit that's in this house. And run them out of every room in this house. Put in the oil, symbolically uh, speaks of the Holy Spirit power over the, the, the top of the door and command them to leave that room. So what I do? So we go through every room in the house and do that. And I walk by this closet and I'm thinking, ah, it's just a closet. Well, I said, nope, go back. What I tell you to do? I'm like, okay, Lord. Go back and open up the door and I can't see anything. It's silly. Or is it? We're dealing with things we can't see, but they're real. Yeah. They're the enemy. Yeah. Take authority over that room. Go downstairs. It's all done. He opens up the front door, and the head of the house said, Now get out and stay out. Slam the door. The Holy Ghost fell, and we all couldn't stand up and worship God and praise God. Wow. Folks, it's a true story. Many years ago, when, when Stacy was, you know, in the cradle. And I was trying to sleep. You know how we men are. The women's, mama's got to do all the work. Well, I can think of a couple of reasons why right now, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> she's got to do all the work. And... Uh, I'm trying to sleep, and, and, and Stacy is screaming and crying, and I mean, it's bad. And I'm trying to go to sleep, and I'm thinking, oh, it's just bellyache, you know, it's nothing. And uh, the Lord says to me, get up, go over there, and rebuke the devil from your daughter. So what do I do? Reluctantly. <laughs> Out of disgust. Folks, we've got authority we don't even know we have. That's right. So I walked over there and laid hands and commanded that devil to leave that girl and she went right to sleep. Now explain that to me. 
Folks, open your eyes. We anointed our eyes here. And I was saying stuff and I'm feeling stuff and you're going to come into the same thing. The Holy Spirit will tell us how to deal with these entities that we're wrestling with that's trying to kill people. It's up to us. The world doesn't have any answers. Amen. Now, God's armor is invincible. It cannot be defeated. <laughs> Praise God. I said the church cannot be defeated. Glory to God. Never take a retreat. Amen. Never. Now sometimes we take a, a swift advance to the rear. <laughs> but we never retreat because if you turn your back on the devil, there's no armor back here. Behind you. Amen. There is no going back. Say amen now. Amen. There's no retreat. It's onward, Christian soldiers. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. This armor is inv in invincible. So simply stand in faith. Stand in faith. Stand in faith. Stay in faith. My motto, keep the faith. Thank you. I forgot it after years. That's why we wrote it down. I'm getting older. Keep the faith and stay in grace. Because you can err from the faith and fall from grace. And then Satan knows that. He picks up on that and takes advantage of you. And you wind up in the mess that you could have avoided by simply keeping the faith and staying in the grace of God. Amen. Not everybody has faith. It only comes by hearing the word. Amen. No other way. So this armor then is describing warfare. I don't like it, do you? But it's real. We have to deal with it. When we find out that this is a victory overcomes the world, even our faith. It's faith in God, the anointing, the word of God, power of God, uh, the armor of God. Uh, your name's in the book. Uh, you have authority over Satan, demons, evil spirits. You can uh, change things. You can change things. Amen. It's just like music. Music can change the atmosphere, but so can words of faith. That's anointed. can change the atmosphere. Fact is, when you're walking in with the armor, you can walk into a dark place and all of a sudden it lights up. You don't even do anything. Yeah. You just walk in. Amen. Demons start scattering because they're, they, they're plaguing people. See? Yeah. We've got to understand how this works and then know who you are in Christ and who He is in us and we'll win every time. Amen. Now this armor is on when it's on, we will use our authority. See, if you don't understand this principle, then you won't exercise any authority over the enemy. You'll just rant and rave at someone in the flesh, and they're not the problem. Amen. Right. Amen. Now let's look at uh, 1 John 4, 1. So this is one thing, and we're almost through here this morning, but 1 John 4, 1... Uh, when you understand these principles that I've just barely touched on, we will do this. Beloved, believe not every spirit. So what we're saying is that people can say something to me. But what they're saying verbally with their own uh, phrases is not really what I'm listening to. You might think it is. Oh, I do listen to you. Goes in this ear and out that ear. See, a good counselor has to learn to sleep with the eyes open. Because what you say doesn't mean a whole lot 
But what the Spirit says to you is what I'm listening for. Amen. Now, there are three spirits we deal with. Evil spirits that can speak to people. Hello. Human spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And that's it. So you have to discern what spirit these people are speaking in. What's the motivating spirit behind what they're saying? Why are they saying these things that are contrary to the Word of God? If it's contrary to the Word of God, it's either from the devil or the human spirit that needs help. That's it. It's easy to figure that out. But how to get people to change, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. Someone said, well, if people just pray more, then things would change. No, wait a minute. Prayer changes people, not things. Amen. Right. People change things. Right. <laughs> so it's easy to pray, God, help. I can't fix it. Now we're getting to where we're trusting God by faith. God will get us there and keep us there. So we're going to try the spirits. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they are of God. All right. Then secondly, we need to fight the good fight of faith. So if we're in faith, trusting God... We'll be able to understand we have the armor on and the ability of God, God's Holy Spirit on us, in us, through us, however you want to say it. And we can, without judging, try these spirits and help people. Right. We're not about condemning people and throwing rocks. We're about helping them. But sometimes people have got a, an indwelt demon they need to have cast out. Yep. And they like to hide you can't hide in the Holy Spirit. Then a lot of times, most of the time here in America, uh, those plaguing entities, evil entities that just buffet people, even Christians that come to church, you carry, carry them with you, come into church, they get a little riled and upset, and because they lord it over you through the week, you yield to it and wind up acting like a butt. I won't go any further because it quacks me up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. You can cut that out a lot. <laughs> I know you can't do that. Then. <laughs> well, fine. You just think worse than that, people. <laughs> you see, sometimes you got to get down to McDonald County talking here. That's what I like about Trump. He could identify. But listen to him too much, you start cursing too much. You've got to watch that. You've got to watch it. After we try the spirits now, we have the privilege to loose and bind. Amen. Look at this verse now in Matthew 16, 19. And we've taught this church that if someone has an indwelt evil spirit, and don't say you don't, mental illness a lot of times is a demonic attack. What makes a person be normal one minute, and next minute I'm going to kill everybody and get their rifle and start shooting? That's demon possession. I mean, the Africans deal with this all the time. I've been over there 18, 19 times in various places in Africa, and most every time they come up and say, I've got a demon, can you help me? No arguing about it. They understand the fact. But when they come in the power of the Holy Ghost, gets a hold of them, they go, oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Amen. They say, I got a demon, can you help me? Here they come. No counseling. What are you going to do? Tell them to get baptized? Won't work. Communion? Won't work. Join church? Won't work. They must be cast out. If you're a believer and have the mantle, the authority, the armor on, you can do it in the name of Jesus. No other name they yield to. Thank God they still yield to that name. <laughs> you got to know that. 
Praise God. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. You gotta know who you are. I think the Africans had a different translation that said something like that, if I remember correctly, whatever we allow on earth will be allowed in heaven, whatever we forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Amen. You're the sons of God. God's given you the authority to make decisions for Him on this earth. Do you understand that? Amen. You're an ambassador for Christ. Might as well admit it. Praise God, because that's God says, He says that's who you are. Amen. John 20, 23 now, quickly, this morning. St. John 20, verse 23. This one's pretty heavy, and I wrestled with this for many years to try to figure it out. And sometimes my favorite verse is Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to God, okay? But He does reveal certain things. And I think I've had partial, a little bit of the revelation of this verse brought to my mind over the years. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted, and whosoever unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Now, for example, I was talking to a Muslim here two weeks ago. He's a good guy, friendly. But he says to me, I like being around Muslim people. He said, the God we serve and the one the Christians serve is the same God. Is that correct? I don't mean to upset people, but that's, what, that's my job. Allah is the moon God, not Jehovah. So we have a problem. And yet, I could have confronted him about the, the death of Christ and the resurrection because he was putting the, uh, Muhammad and Jesus at the same level, and they are not. Neither is Buddha or any of the rest of them. There's only one Savior that came from heaven, went to the cross, and died for our sins so that he could save our souls, was resurrected early Sunday morning, that went back to heaven, seated on the right hand of God, till he makes his enemies his footstool. He will make his enemies his footstool through his body, the church. There is no other way. Amen. I could have got into it at McDonald's, but you know, I wasn't led to. And I'm thinking, well, if you're happy being a Muslim, have at it. Whose of sins you retain, they're retained. That's right. Did you get that? If I don't choose to share the gospel, I'm attaining their sins. If I choose, by leading the Holy Spirit, to remit their sins by sharing the gospel and leading them to Christ, that's what it's talking about. Because we within ourselves cannot forgive sins. Hello, Mr. Pope. I'm not telling it right. Mary is not co redemptive with Christ. Mary needed to be born again. She was in the upper room filled with the Holy Ghost like the rest of the disciples. Amen. So don't tell me she became the queen of heaven. All these things I have to deal with and Satan is planned for your soul to try to take you to hell. And i got to tell it just like it is. No matter whether you give a thousand dollars or a penny, it doesn't matter to me. Because God's going to judge me for what I teach and what I preach behind this sacred desk. And by the grace of God, I'm going to say it like it is. Whether you like it or whether you don't, that's the way she works. That's the way the cookie crumbles. You're making me feel bad. Well, maybe it's the Holy Spirit. But I choose this morning by the grace of God to help you find your way and remit your sins. Amen. How's it done? There's only one way. You've got to make yourself to the cross of Calvary. You've got to come to the cross where Jesus was nailed for our sins. Six long hours he suffered on the cross. 
and paid the price for our salvation. You must accept him as Savior and Lord. Or you cannot be born again. Did you hear what I said? And if you reject his offer of salvation, forgiveness of sins, home in heaven, uh, sonship with God for eternity, then you, sir, are deceived. And it's from the devil. So I have the authority by the grace of God to loosen the binds as see fit, being led of the Holy Spirit. I know this. God wants every person here. I don't know really if anybody's saved. I hope. I see fruit and I, I take comfort in that. But when I see bad spirits sitting in you and on you in church, you got a problem. Yeah. Might as well deal with it. I mean, you haven't fixed it yet. You've been to every church in the country until you find somebody that's preaching, thus saith the Lord. Yes, and then you'll be brought to a decision. Yes, amen. You will bow the knee. I refuse to bow the knee to Baal. Yeah, I refuse to submit to Satan. He's not Lord Satan. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Satan's gone to hell for eternity. All the fallen angels and demons are going with him for eternity, the lake of fire. The sad fact of it is, if you're not born again, you will be with them for eternity, suffering in the flames of hell. You can't disprove that. It's the Word of God. It isn't God's will for any of us to go there. No, He didn't create that place for human beings. No, at all costs we've got to stay out of there. I don't care what God asks you to do. Gladly do it in the name of Jesus and He'll bless you for it. Amen. You don't have a right to have a say with your life anyway. You give up your pride and ego and arrogance when you bowed the knee to Christ and made Him Savior and Lord. If you're holding on to it, you don't have the armor on. You've got to humble yourself and be like a little child. God, I, I don't know. I, I can't do anything. I don't know anything. I can't be anything. How can I help anybody? Now God's going to move in and help you. Amen. So faith is what we need and what it takes to withstand the spiritual attack. Every one of us are going to be attacked. I know you confession people, you don't agree with that. Well, how's it, how's it going? I want you to look over there in Isaiah. I wasn't going to go here. Isaiah 59, 19, quickly. Oh, I'm going to make some folks mad now. The modern Pentecostal church is weak. You know why? How many would like to know? Now, I'm not saying everybody. But I'm saying most of the supposed Pentecostal charismatic church is weak because we have tried to quote promises and make God do something. If that's true, you're in control and God's just a puppet. Right, right. That's right. We cannot obligate God in this manner. That's right. Now get upset. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and His glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in. Look at this. Please look at this. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. Not me. The enemy has never came in. Uh-huh. Well, uh, you better live a while and you'll find out. You cannot stop the enemy from coming in. Confess all you want. You cannot stop the enemy from coming in. But thank God if your name's in the book. Now say amen. If you got the armor of God on, if you're called of God, anointed of God, equipped of God to fight the devil, yes. the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy and drive him out of the camp. Glory to God. Otherwise, he's just going to come in and mutilate you. The choice is yours. You've got to get serious about this thing or just forget it. 
Now, closing this morning, when I give that quote from Bert Clendenin about a good preacher is loved and hated at the same time, she goes, that's you. Probably the last one more than the first one. I said, well, fine. <laughs> I don't care anymore. What's that song? I sent it to Brandon, you know. Phil Collins, yeah, oh yeah. You're all, there's some truth in that worldly song. I do care, but you know what I'm saying. So, the armor implies our lives. How many wants the armor on? Yes. Ah, here's a few conditions and no more scripture. Okay, you can't tell you anymore. Our lives are free from hidden sins. Ow. Uh-oh. Little things. Mm -hmm. That's the reason confession, folks. We need to confess to God. Because none of us are out without some kind of problem somewhere. If you were free from all problems, you wouldn't need Jesus. How come some of the armor's falling off already here? If we want the armor of God, our, our lives are going to be free from hidden sins. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Why not just let him go? Yeah. Why not let the blood of Christ just cleanse you? Yeah. Even Christians, <laughs> all the time. And not that we want to sin, no. But if we do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If we confess, we, the church, if we confess our sins, He's faithful just to forgive us our sins or our sinning and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, amen. The armor's restored then. So I just try to walk in an attitude of repentance. God, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm always sorry. No, not really. <laughs> we need to follow God's will, number two. Right. Do you want to follow God's will for your life? We need to rely on God's goodness. What's that quote they're always saying in Africa? God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. Yeah. You know, they quote that all the time. And it's true. Amen. Rely on God's goodness. Keep your mind and your thoughts clear. I had to write that one down. Because our mind has been totally bombarded by social media nonsense. Yeah. Now, why do some of you put on the Facebook every time you get an ingrown toenail? <laughs> huh? Well, you know, the dog got run over. I don't care about your dog getting run over. Tell your family. I wouldn't even be on that silly Facebook if it wasn't for Messenger where I can talk with people halfway around the world and connections with the church. I wouldn't even be on there because it's stupid. <laughs> Some of you, you live your life through that stupid Facebook. Tell every all your feelings. Some things do not be, need to be made known to the general public. People, private. Keep your mind your thoughts clear. Use a rumor word against the devil. I'm giving you some pointers here. You've got to know the word of God. Yet some of you have not read the red letter yet, which is disappointing to this preacher. Because how can I take you any further until you first submit to what I want? Yes, you're the pastor. Well, until you submit to what I want, I question that. Right. You haven't submitted to the office of pastor until you do something you don't want to do. That's right. I'm talking about wholeness. You think Jesus wanted to do everything he did? No, but he submitted to God. Is, is it God's will for you to read a red letter? I'm telling you, and yet you balk up on it. Why is that? You're just lazy. Well, what am I going to do about it?
Remind yourself that the armor's on in tough times. Folks, we've had a pretty good beating this year. You know that? Some of us have. But remind yourself, I got the armor on in these tough times. Praise God. This one, know that attacks will come. I wished it wasn't so. I wished it wasn't so. But attacks against you will come. It may come from different avenues of approach, different circumstances. But when those attacks come, it's all from the devil. They will come. Remember the story about the man that the men that built two houses. One upon the rock, one upon the sand. Remember that in the Gospels? The storms came to both houses. Same storm. One house stood and the other fell. The foundation is Christ and the gospel. You'll stand the attacks against the devil. I go through the Bible, I can't find anybody that didn't fight Satan. Can you? I've been reading Job. Man, man alive. I don't think we could survive that. All of them fought Satan. Be prayerful as counterattacks are certain. Let me say it again. God does something and it's great, but Satan doesn't give up. He counterattacks what God wants to do. Just because you experience a victory in your life, that's great, but know that Satan doesn't give up. He's going to counterattack and try to get you another way. That's the reason when people are filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak with tongues and they get the power of God on them here at the church, I rejoice. But I also know God's preparing that person for war. Right. Know that. He won't leave you defenseless. He'll make a way. And thank God He's the way. Strengthen yourself. By spending time in church services. What happened to the armor? Strengthen yourselves by spending time in church services. Amen. We need to be around God's people. Yes. We understand. We're in the same world. Same problems. Same devil fighting us. But same Lord of glory helping us. We understand. We need somebody to understand. We understand. But there is a way out. Praise God. There is a way through. Amen. But it's quality time when you bring your family to the house of God. It's nothing more than just a meeting, hearing some word. It's nothing fancy. I don't need coffee and donuts to entice you to come in here. You come in here of your own free will. Oh, everyone here is in the will of God. Amen. Everyone. Yes. Know that. God has a plan. He wants you to come into it. The vision, He wants you to come into it. But know that Satan's going to stand to oppose you. Sure as I'm standing here next Sunday morning or Sunday night or whenever, you're ready to go to church, Satan will throw a counterattack to try to stop you. Every single time. Until you make up your mind, no devil, I'm not bending on that. Right. I'll be in the house of God because I need. I tell you what, as a preacher all these years, I realize, man, I need the church. I need the church. Yeah. I need the believers. There's something about it. You don't get it out there in the world. Yeah. I know it's only a few hours. Don't take it for granted. Amen. We need the church. So spend time in the church, you know. 
because it's a place of refuge. When problems come, hear this, please. When problems come, do not run from the church. Run to the church. If anything's going to happen for you, it most of the time will be in the church. Most of the time. So stay focused on the gospel and the price that was paid for you. Can't overemphasize that today. Stay focused on the gospel. Now, I don't know your hearts today. I don't need to know. But, you know, when I went to the Baptist church, we called it um, rededicating. Rededicating our lives. And if Jesus went to the cross and hung there, which he did, naked, totally humiliated, beat to a pulp, and suffered, is it too much to ask for somebody to confess Christ, to come to the altar and get on the knee, and in doing so, praying the prayer, Lord, God, I need you. If you've never done that, God requires repentance, which means I'm through with Satan. I'm through with living a life of sin that's killing me. I want Christ. I want Jesus. You turn from that, and turn to Him. And when you do, He's there. He says, come to me. He turns nobody away. But you've got to make the walk. You've got to make the commitment. I can't do it for you. I mean, I can help you pray, but I mean, it's between you and God. Then secondly, there are Christians that have strayed away. And I call that a prayer of recommittal. It works every time. You can't stay in the hog pen and expect to get to heaven. You've got to come out of it. Yes. You've got to rise and get back to the Father. He cares. He wants you to come back to Him. It's the same thing. And then there's the deal. Then you begin to walk on the straight and narrow and get your priorities in order. Get your priorities in order. Some of your priorities are out of order. You need to fix that, people. God's not going to make you fix it. You have to fix it. Amen. When you do, here comes the Holy Spirit. Oh God, take not the Holy Spirit from us. No. No, I don't do that. No. He won't. But you've got to walk with Him. Father, I've delivered my soul today the best I could. And now it's decision time for people. I pray you give us grace to make the right decisions today, if need be, in Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet, please.